Hello everyone, I have graded and provided feedback for your practice annotations. I'm um, sorry it took me a little longer than anticipated. However, um, if you go into your grades and click on practice annotations and view feedback, you will see all of my commentary, but I wanted to provide a little bit of, of explanation on some of the global issues that I saw and provide some reminders for you as you work on your annotated, your larger annotated bibliographies that are due in the next few days. So the first thing that I want to address is the format and this annotated bibliography and your um, position argument paper are your two APA style papers of the semester. So please make sure that you adhere to APA format in terms of providing a title page, um, 12 point Times New Roman, double spaced, um, those types of, of things, and also APA style citations. So please adhere to APA format in your annotated bibliographies. Um, to further comment on the format of an annotated bibliography, they have a very rigid structure. So they're going to be, I mean, it, it looks a little funny when, when you look at it like this, but uh, annotated bibliographies are, they're rigid in that um, you're always going to lead with your citation and underneath that citation, you are going to have a summary that should not exceed five sentences and then um, an evaluation portion where you address the crap, which we'll, we'll talk about um, in just a second. So please um, adhere to that kind of rigid structure where you have your citation um, in, in full, your APA style citation, and then your annotation, which includes the summary and the evaluation. The other thing that I want to mention um, that kind of, of builds off of uh, the, the format um, is, is your citations and um, APA style format. And the thing that you guys want to remember is that with APA style format citations, titles are funky, they're weird, and that only the first letter of the first word of, of, the, of the title of the article um, is capitalized. So everything else is lowercase. Journal titles are italicized, and the author um, the author's names are formatted um, differently than, than MLA style. All you have is the author's last name and first initial, and then following that you have um, the year. And there is a beautiful APA tips video that I have in Canvas, and if you have not watched that, um, I encourage you to go back through and, and watch it again. I know that some of you copy and pasted your citations from the library database and I said previously that that's not a problem I encourage you actually to do that because um, that way you know you have most of the information that you need in your citation however um, I also mentioned in the APA tips video and, and Matthew Pierce and I both mentioned in the library tutorial that sometimes the format um, of those citations is not always accurate you want to make sure that you go through and double check everything and in and, and, and particularly the titles. Some of the titles are going to be all um, uppercase. Sometimes um, the names of the authors are going to be all uppercase and, and so you want to make sure that you go through and you make those adjustments and make those corrections uh, before you put them in your um, annotation. So please if you, um, I encourage you again like I said to um, go through and watch the APA tips video uh, because that will help you in terms of, of your citations and I'm also posting an APA cheat sheet in Canvas for you to take an ogle at um, that uh, I think that that might be beneficial to you all as as well. The other thing that I want to mention is the evaluation portion of, of your annotations. And if you remember back to when we were talking about annotated bibliographies, I said that an annotation has uh, three parts. It has the citation, it has the summary of the article itself, and then it has the evaluation. And that, my darlings, is the heart and soul of, of an annotation. You really want to focus on the crap the purpose of an annotated bibliography is to show how credible and relevant your sources are to uh, a larger kind of researched 
project. And in order to show the credibility and the relevance of, of the articles that you've chosen is to address the elements of crap. That is not optional. You have to do that. You have to tell me the currency, when it was published, how it relates to your overall topic or your overall issue, how uh, the authority and the credentials and, and the, the, um, qualifications of of the author um, the accuracy of the information the publication information what kind of article um, is it is it a scholarly or a popular uh, publication and um, what what are the kind of, of uh, what's the purpose of the overall article because if it's a scholarly resource it's usually the purpose of those is to share um, research findings and um, more popular um, articles like Time Magazine or um, New York Times, New York Post is is they, they have very different purposes in mind they're usually biased in in their um, in their writings and and that's neither here nor there it's, it's, it's important that you recognize um, if something has a bias so you really focus on the evaluation portion of, of your annotations some other reminders that I have for you all um, as you compile your five sources is that your sources should be in alphabetical order by author's last name and your um, citations should have a hanging indent and if you don't know what that means um, that is this kind of if you look at this citation right here you'll notice that it is offset here with that kind of little hanging indent that is not the same as being centered um, it is a special thing uh, a hanging indent and if you look at the APA tips video I show you how to get a hanging indent in, in a word document so um, please make sure that you have a hanging indent your sources are in alphabetical order and if you have any questions really about um, the annotated bibliography what it looks like and 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 how it should be structured there is a wonderful example of of an annotated bibliography in uh, it's color coded in canvas so please take an opportunity to look at that please use your resources I've provided a wonderful plethora amount of, of information for you in canvas and and take advantage of those sources and and use them um, in uh, the larger picture um, that I want to mention is that um, I am giving you an extra couple of days to work on your annotated bibliography in canvas it says that it is due on Sunday but I am changing that I am giving you an extra two days and adjusting the due date to have it be due on Tuesday because I have gotten a couple of, of, of requests for um, extensions on on the annotated bibliography so I'm giving everybody until Tuesday for that so um, in your larger annotated bibliography you are required to have five sources three of those have to come from the library databases one of them has to be a scholarly source and um, the other two can come from uh, a variety of sources it, it doesn't matter as long as, as they come from credible um, uh, resources but um, and your annotation the practice annotation the thing that I have just graded and given back to you counts as one of those sources so in the grand scheme of things you all only have four more sources to um, annotate and and put together so please take advantage of the feedback that I have given you in um, canvas on your practice annotation and apply all of that feedback to your other four sources as you work on them. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me um, or um, let me know, uh, drop in during my office hours, ask for, um, give me a phone call, um, send me an email, contact me in some way and um, I'll be happy to help you. So let me know if you have any questions and I am uh, excited to see what you guys come up with for your annotated bibliographies.